Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we will look at short-term notes payable. This topic is covered in financial accounting introductory course as well as the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including many CPA questions. If you like my recording, please click on the like button, share them, put them in playlist, let the world know about them. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. So share the wealth and connect with me on Instagram. On my website, you will find additional resources to supplement your accounting education and pass help you pass the CPA exam. Please check out my website. Let's take a look at at short-term notes. Short-term notes are no more than loans. So when you take out a loan, when you take out a loan from the bank, you debit cash and you credit notes payable. So this is a loan. Basically, let's assume you borrowed $10,000. Debit cash, credit, notes, payable. Another way uh, to to uh, to get a loan is to when you buy a car let's assume you bought a car what you do is you have the car for ten thousand dollar and now you have a notes payable so simply put you did not pay any money you just borrowed the car borrowed money against the car so the car is the asset not the money and you have the car but you have a loan and the third option with notes payable is when you have an account payable that's due. Let's assume you bought from your supplier 10,000 worth of inventory. So you bought from your supplier 10,000 worth of inventory and you bought them on account. You bought them using account payable and they gave you uh, 30 days to pay. When the 30 days came due, you did not have money to pay the $10,000. So what the supplier might say, I will replace your accounts payable. Therefore, I will replace your accounts payable. I will debit your accounts payable and replace it with a notes payable of $10,000. So these are the options that we will have a notes payable. Either when we borrowed money, we buy stuff, buy a loan, or replace an accounts payable with a notes payable. Those are the three most common scenarios. So what is a short-term note? A short-term note is basically a loan, a short-term loan, a written promise to pay a specified amount of money on a future date within one year. And the reason we say within one year, that's why it is short term. Most notes bear interest. It means the interest is stated. So you'll know what the interest and the note may arise from an overdue accounts payable. You cannot pay your account. They will turn it into a note. You're borrowing money from the bank. Or as I told you, sometime you might buy a car or a vehicle using a note. Now, note extended to uh, for credit period. So simply put, what happened is, as I said, you owe someone some money, you cannot pay them because you purchase something on account. What they do is say, okay, we will replace your note with your, we will replace your account with a note payable. So on August 31st, a brandy company asked McGraw to accept a $100 cash and a 60-day 12% notes payable to replace its existing accounts payable of 600. So we owe $600. So we have an accounts payable of $600. All what we have right now is a $100 in cash and the note is due. So what we say, we tell the supplier, look, we're, we're going to pay you, we're going to pay you $100. We're going to pay you $100 in cash. And the remaining is, the remaining will be 500 if you're willing to accept a note, and that note will be for $500. And we'll pay you 12% interest, and we'll pay you this money in 60 days. So here what we did is we took out the accounts payable, we debited the accounts payable, we replaced it with a note payable. The note is only 500 because we paid cash of 100 So 100 to pay the cash and 500 for the note. Now, obviously, for the note, we have to pay the note plus interest. So what happened when we pay the note plus interest, and this will be on October the 22nd. Now we're going to pay the note. We're going to pay $500 plus $500 times 12% times 
60 divided by 360. Always do the fraction first. And if you do the computation, we're going to owe $10 in interest. Therefore, we're going to debit the note, $500, get rid of this note. So this note here, now we're paying it. Now we're going to pay the note. The note is gone. The note is zero. We're going to pay the note. And we're going to debit interest expense for $10. And in cash, we're going to pay $510 in cash. So what we did is we replaced an account payable with a note. Then we paid the note plus interest. Now, we could be issuing note for borrowing money from the bank. Let's assume on September 30th, a company borrows $2,000 from the bank at 12% interest. Well, we debit cash. We walked away with $2,000 and we created a notes of $2,000. Day, 60 days later, November the, the 29th, we have to pay back the note plus interest. Always compute how much you have to pay first. It is $2,000 times... 12% times 60 divided by 360. Always do the fraction first, and you will figure out that you have to pay $40. Therefore, you debit the note. You get rid of this note. You debit interest expense for $40, and in total, you'll pay $2,040. $2,000 for the note and $40 for the interest. So this is basically when you have a note. This is what happened when you have a note, and it's paid within the same accounting period the same year what happened if you have a note that extend over two periods what does that mean it means you borrow the money in one period and you have to pay it in another period so simply put the date of the note is here you borrow the money here you borrow the money in this period this is period one this is the end of the period then you have to pay back pay back in year period two year two so the date of the note is in this period, you borrowed the money. The end of the period, you have not paid the note yet, then you have to pay it on the maturity date, but the maturity date happens to be in period two. What does that mean? It means at the end of the period, you have to make an adjusting entry. What is the adjusting entry for? The adjusting entry is for the interest expense that accrued from the date the note was signed until the end of the period. So you have an interest expense for this period one. So you have to record this interest expense. The best way to illustrate this is to work an example. And this is as complicated as it gets for a notes payable is when you borrow the money in one period and pay it in another period as far as a financial accounting student will have to deal with. So let's assume on December the 16th, the company borrows $2,000 from a bank at 12% for 60 days. So now we borrowed the money. Let's let's just take a look at the timeline. We borrowed the money. Let's assume this is December 16th. And we're borrowing the money for 60 days. So it will not be due until Fe February the 14th. So what happened is this. We borrowed the money in one period because December 31st is the end of the period. So we borrowed the money in one period. This is period one. This is period one. And we're going to have the money in period two, paid back the money in period So what's going to happen between December 31st, December 16th, and December 31st is we are going to accrue interest. Okay. So how much interest did we accrue? Well, we have to compute, which is $2,000 times the interest rate is 12% times 15 divided by 360. Again, do the fraction first. And the interest that you have to accrue is $10. Therefore, we debit interest expense, $10, and we credit interest payable, $10. Simply put, we have $10 that are due. We don't have to pay it yet until February the 14th, but it was accrued. It was accrued from December 16th till December 31st. On February the 14th, we have to pay the whole note plus interest. Well, the whole note is $2,000. The interest rate is 12%. And the time period is 60 divided by 360. That's the time. So we're going to have to pay in total an interest of $40. Now, we have to pay back the note plus interest. So we have to pay in total $2,040. $2,000 for the note, $40 of interest. Now we debit the note because we got rid of the note. The note is gone basically by debiting the note. The note is gone. We have to debit this interest payable 
for ten dollars why interest payable for ten dollars is because we already recorded ten dollars of interest expense and we said we're gonna pay it now we are paying it therefore this interest payable is gone then we have to book an additional thirty dollars of interest from january 1st to february the 14th valentine's day so from january 1st till february the 14th we have 30 days of interest that we have to account for therefore the remaining 30 dollars is interest expense so of the 40 dollars interest expense this is what we are saying of the 40 dollars interest expense 10 dollars was recorded in period one and 30 dollars was recorded in period two so period one happens to be 2019 period two happens to be 2020. so this is what i meant by when a note is due within two accounting period if you have any questions please let me know in the next recording we would look at payroll liabilities if you like this recording please click on the like button share it subscribe and look at my website if you're looking for additional supplemental resources to supplement your accounting education and or your cpa studies good luck study hard and stay safe during those coronavirus